Welcome to Pink Art Quilting and Embroidery. Today we are making a rag quilt. The tools you need for a rag quilt are basic quilting tools such as a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, rulers, and um, yardage for the blocks that you'll be making. In this case, I use several different flannel prints as well as a denim print that we're gonna use on the back side of our quilt blocks. Um, in this case, for this quilt, I, am, I have chosen to use um, denim for the back side as well as two layers of flannel on top of that. And what that'll do is give me a nice um, ragged edge on each block that will allow us to create a really soft frayed rag type design. And I'll put a picture of a couple of examples of rag quilts that have that frayed edge and so you'll kind of see what the ending result of that is. So I started with flannel yardage. I cut my yardage down into seven inch squares and then I matched my squares up with the piece of denim on the, bro on the bottom where the good side of the denim is facing down and then added a, a piece of flannel for the middle and another piece that goes on the top. And it's helpful when you're doing this to keep in mind that this edge is going to end up being cut so that it frays and creates that soft edge. So if you have a color in the middle that is usually a nice, a nice bright color that coordinates with the top but contrasts with it, then it'll give you a nice color look in that, in that rag edge when your quilt is done. So I cut all my pieces into seven inch squares based on the amount of yardage I had determined how big I wanted my quilt to be and this one is going to be a throw size quilt. So I'm going to have seven inch blocks that will be 10 blocks across and 13 blocks down or 13 by 10 blocks. Um, so I've cut my seven inch denim blocks and I do have two different denims. I have a plain denim and I just happened to be what was in my stash so I'm going to um, have those be randomly different on the back of the quilt and layered them three deep so two flannel and one piece of denim on the bottom and then I took that to the sewing machine and I stitched a, a diagonal line across just to hold the three layers in place for the next step where I'll be um, where I'll be attaching them in rows and then stitched another line that creates a crisscross and that stabilizes everything so every, all the layers stay together as you're sewing because flannel is kind of thick and the denim is kind of thick so when you have three layers on this side and you're sewing it to another block that also has three layers now you're working with six layers and those six layers will get pretty thick so one thing that we do is we stabilize it with the stitching across the block and then the next thing and it also I used a bright pink that coordinates with the pinks in the squares that I'm using so that it would add some color and pizzazz. This particular quilt will go to um, a preteen girl so the bright pinks and purples along with the sparklies will be something that I think will be um, good for that age for that age group. So crisscross to stabilize it. Now when I stitched these I did increase my stitch length from 2.5, which is the default on my sewing machine, to 3.0, um, so that it to 3.0, so that um, it would look a little more decorative um, in the final result. When I'm stitching the the pieces together, I I used a walking foot on my sewing machine. So if you have a walking foot for your sewing machine, I recommend that you use that. It helps to keep the layers. Um, going through the machine at the same rate so that everything will stay nice and flat. So I stitched the crosses on the squares. And once I had that done and I, I'm, I worked on all my squares, my next step was to take the squares that I had stitched down and attach them together in rows. 
and I did take a time to use a piece of graph paper and just some simple markers to kind of lay out what I wanted that quilt to look like and decided that I would take the four different blocks that I have and just do them in a, in a ladder kind of format where um, the purple would end up in a diagonal design across, across the quilt, very simple pattern. Um, so I have taken the four blocks and sewn them together. So this is the, the thing that's a little different from a regular quilt. In a regular quilt, your seam allowances end up on the wrong side of the quilt. In this case, the seam allowances end up at the top so that you can snip them later and create that soft um, rag look um, at the end of the quilt. So I took two blocks together laid them together so that the edges were even and then I stitched a half inch seam allowance and that gives you a little more um, seam allowance for clipping and giving that nice soft frayed look when you're done with your quilt and um, in the when I'm doing the crisscrosses I don't worry about back stitching because the ends of the stitching are going to be in the seam allowances but when I'm sewing the squares themselves together I did back stitch at the beginning and the end because I didn't want anything to come loose because again this is six layers and later when you're sewing your rows together you're going to have even more layers together so back stitching gives a little more security to those seams so I went through again seam allowances coming to the top stitch my fours together and this is just an example of part of the quilt so you could kind of see how this starts um, and then so now I've got one row and I've sewn a second row to it. So I will, and I'll show you this in a minute, but I will show you how to um, attach these. In the case of a rag quilt, because you are working with so many levels, so many, um, so many layers, I recommend binder clips for that. That way, um, I found that straight pins didn't want to go through all the different layers because you have three layers, six, you have 12 layers all together. So I used binder clips. I lay the seam allowance open on both sides, match them up as well as possible, and then put a binder clip on each side. And I go down the, pe the squares on the row that I'm working on, and I do that all the way down. And that way I have the best um, alignment of squares at the end of the process. So I'm holding the seam allowances open, matching them up as good as possible, and then putting the binder clips on. And then once I've done that, I will sew the row together and it will look like this. So this is, I'll put this so the camera can catch that. So this is a row of four as an example with four others and we have sewn these together again with a half inch seam allowance and again back stitching at the beginning and the ending and I even took a minute to back stitch when I was on these seam allowances because there's a lot of thicknesses there and I don't want anything to come loose so I batched it back stitch at the beginning half inch seam allowance come down to each each um each join of the blocks and back stitch a little bit on each one just so everything is nice and secure then when we're done with that so we would go through the whole quilt and we would attach all the rows and all the blocks together so that we have the the seam allowances now the last tool that you'll need once you have stitched your quilt together is a pair of sharp scissors and in this case i have a pair of fisker scissors that actually have a spring on them so that when you snip with them they will pop back open so that you don't have in a pair of regular scissors you'd have to squeeze them and then pull them apart and squeeze them and when you're doing very small snips along every seam all the way through your quilt that's a lot of snipping so your hands will get tired and and you'll you'll be glad for the spring action of the scissors to pop back open but you do want the scissors to be strong and to be sharp when you're doing this because you need the tip of the scissor to snip the seam allowance okay so in here you can see that I have started snipping the seam allowances so let me show you as an example 
this is a this is how your seam allowance looks once it's sewn. Take these back off so they don't confuse you. Okay. And since we stitched this and we left this laid open, one of the things that you'll need to do is put your scissor in there right in the corner and snip. And now this will stand up and you can snip the rest of it. So let me turn it around and snip the other corner. Let me turn it around and snip the other corner. Okay. So now this seam allowance will stand up and you can snip this so that it's going to get the frayed look. And then when it comes to the seam allowance here, you can see I just snipped, I snipped the, that seam allowance. And because you've double stitched in here, it should be secure. The only caution that I would give would be don't obviously snip through your stitching line. So you want to, snip, and that's why this is a good tool to use because it's a short blade. So you can easily clip uh, close to the stitching line without cutting the stitching line. So that is um, how you create the, the, um, the fray to it. Now still it doesn't look like a whole lot um, at this point once you've done this through the whole quilt, you will go around all of the edges of your quilt before you start snipping and lay the um, seam allowances open and stitch a securing stitch one half inch in all the way around the outer edges of your quilt. And you will also snip that edge as part of the, snip, the, the step that you go through to snip all of the edges. So once all of your rows are stitched together, all of the snipping has been done. You've done that edge, that stitch around the outer edge. You have snipped everything, which will take a little bit of time. That's usually something I do, you know, in a chair in front of the TV. Um, when there's something on TV that I can listen to without watching, because you definitely can't take your eyes off of this when you're clipping, because if you do, you run the risk of snipping through one of your seams. So those are the steps that go into a rag quilt. So I will take what I've started here and my pieces and put that together and meet you back right here in just a few seconds. Hi, through the magic of video, we now have a completed quilt. Before I go on to the washing and drying steps of this, I want to talk a little bit about the snippers that I used to do the cutting on this quilt. So let's start by looking at the snippers that I showed you in the first segment. I showed these snippers. Um, I've used these for several of the rag quilts that I have done and they've worked really well and the springing action is really good for many repetitive snips throughout the whole quilt because as you can see, we snipped every seam allowance that we had on this quilt as well as snipping around the edge. When I started trying to use these, I found that the the blades on the scissors were not strong enough or sharp enough to get through all of the layers that I was working with. And um, I tried to work on them, tried to tighten up the screw, all of that. None, none of that seemed to help. So I went into my stash of scissors, of which I think I probably have a collection. Some people would call a collection and pulled out a couple of other scissors that I had. These are also Fiskars. They also have the spring action. So I pulled these out and I started snipping with these. Didn't get through the layers at all. It was definitely too lightweight for the particular job that I was doing where I had a layer of denim and two layers of um, flannel and often, you know, six layers or 12 layers to cut through. And these definitely were not the tool for that job. So I gave up on these. Then I pulled these out, again, a pair of Fiskars, and again, spring action. These look broken. When I first looked at them, I thought that I had gotten broken scissors, and they have nubbed off the top blade and left the longer blade long. And that is fine if what you're snipping is flat, where you have room for that extra blade on the bottom to be. But when I was trying to snip some of the little tight corners where the seam allowances are laid out, this got in the way. And the action of trying to squeeze this was um, really hard on my hands. 
Uh, I found myself squeezing with this hand and then actually squeezing the blade with this hand to try to get through the layers. Again, it wasn't the right tool to get through all of the layers, so I gave up on these scissors. Then my husband felt sorry for me, came back in the house from his um, tools and brought these scissors, which are again Fiskars and they say Amplify Razor Edge. Um, not sure what they're intended for, but I took these scissors. They didn't have the spring action, but at that point I was willing to use anything. So after trying several scissors, determining that they weren't going to work, I went to Amazon and looked for a scissor that had a really good review, specifically using the scissor for rag quilt snipping. And I came across this particular scissor um, that had really good reviews that had the spring action that I was looking for um, and seemed to be a good choice. And the scissor that I ended up using was Heritage Handcrafted Cutlery. And this one is a six and a half inch rag quilting snip. And I will put a link to this, I'm not affiliated, but I'll put a link to this in the description. So these scissors were excellent. They cut through all of the layers. They sprang back open like they were supposed to. It was awesome. Definitely would recommend these to anybody that's doing rag quilts, especially if you're doing more than one. This is definitely an, an, a good option for that. So use these scissors to do the rest of it um, after going through these four different ones and not having good results with them. So that was one thing that I wanted to show you. Now, once everything was snipped, then we moved on to the final step which is kind of a messy step, but it is the step that gives you the fray. Um, my snips are about a quarter inch apart. Some folks will actually snip much closer together, more like an eighth of an inch, and that will, just, that will have an impact on what your end result will look like. So this is what it looks like with pretty much a, a quarter inch snip. Each snip was about a quarter inch apart. And this is what I was talking about before in that because there are three layers and because you're pulling all the layers into your seam allowance, you can see that the denim on the back side of the quilt has impacted what the top, what the frayed edges look like. In this square, we have a red piece of fabric under this, this particular square, and you can see that red coming through. Um, in the purple, we have a pink piece of fabric, a pink piece of flannel underneath that, and you can see that come through. So that is what I meant by the three layers gives you opportunities to get different effects on the top than um, uh, when you're making these rag quilts. So consider that when you're deciding what your layers will be. You definitely do not have to use the denim on the back. That was something that I had seen on Pinterest and was interested in trying, so I did try that. Um, the quilt is relatively heavy because you do have three layers of some pretty um, thick fabrics. So the, the quilt itself is, is relatively heavy. Now, the next step after everything is clipped is to put it in the washing machine. And um, I recommend you put a couple of towels in the washing machine with it because when it gets wet, it's gonna be really heavy. And the towels will help keep the washing machine balanced. So you're going to wash it once through with no soap and then wash it through again with a little bit of soap in it so that it gets two really good washes and then be prepared to scoop out any of the frayed edges and, and lint that's going to be in the washing machine. Then put it into the dryer for tumbling and I watched my load as it was drying about every say 10 minutes. I would go in there five to 10 minutes and I would clean out the lint trap because all the little frayed edges are going to come out in the dryer and they're going to they're going to go into your lint trap and you're going to want to clean that out pretty regularly while this is running um, through the dryer so this one has been through the wash and the dryer it's totally a completed project so um, if you have other ways that you have made quilts and made the rag quilts and want to put anything in the comments i'd love to hear your comments i'd love to hear your ideas this one is a standard seven inch square quilt, but you can definitely cut your pieces in um, other, other ways. Like for instance, with this quilt, you can see there's a square here where I cut four smaller 
um, squares and put those into the quilt. So you can definitely, there's a lot you can do with your quilt. Just remember that for every piece that you have and the seam allowance you have that snipping that you're going to be doing so you know you wouldn't want to try a quilt like this with say one inch squares all the way through because you would spend a really long time doing the snipping so i hope this helped um, i hope that especially if you're a beginner quilter and you want to quilt but you're nervous about um, you know can you do it and what are the tools that you need this is a pretty good project to start with like we talked about in the beginning a rotary cutter a cutting mat um, a walking foot on your sewing machine um, some good scissors for the snipping part of the process those are really the basic tools that you need um, the flannel in this particular quilt was again flannel i picked up at joann's fabrics when it was on sale the denim is also um, joann's fabrics that i've had in my cloth you know in my stash on the shelf for a long time. Um, so, you know, there were things that I had here. Um, so I hope this helped. I hope that you got something out of it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching the videos. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the notification button so you'll know when we upload new videos. Mm -hmm.